This is the Sega Can Gamer, and you are live with the MMA Hole! Mixed Martial A Holes! MMA Marshall A. No way. Oh! From the Queen Studios of New York, UFC Fight Night, Fight Week, Charlotte, with Justine Kish, live with the MMA. Oh! What's up, friends and family? Everybody, I hope everyone's wonderful, wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. TGIW, I hope you guys are having a great time tonight. Let me hear in the chat right now. We got people going crazy in that chat room, and we have a special guest right off the bat, right off the top of the show. We're coming in running. We're hitting the ground running over here. We have our good friend of the show. Welcome back, Justine Kish, live on the MMA Holes. Justine, welcome back to the show. There she is. Uh, hey, you guys. It's awesome to be on MMA Holes again. Uh, um, how are you guys? We're good. We're good. We like to say wonderful, wonderful, wonderful over wonderful. here on the MMA Holes. So it's always good to have you back on the show. And I know you're a busy woman right now. I mean, there is a fight this weekend uh, in the middle of fight week. Everything's got to be going crazy. I see you on Instagram doing wild stuff over there, getting ready for this fight. And all <laughs> I see is big smiles right now. You seem like your spirits are super high. My spirits are always super high when it's fight week. I'm excited to compete. There's a lot of work that goes into it. And I'm also happy I have my fellow companion with me, my dog Merlin. So he makes me happy all the time. Um, but I, this is my home city. Like my home, my hometown is Cramerton, North Carolina. Um, I usually, when people ask where I live, I say, well, do you know where Charlotte is? And they're like, yes. I'm like, okay, I live a few miles outside of Charlotte called Cramerton, North Carolina, but I commute to Charlotte uh, on a daily basis. Um, I'm all over the place in this training, but it's really cool because I have a lot of community support and I'm I almost, I'm running around town out of all these different gyms. And then I go to one place in Gastonia for my MMA training. So um, I s decided to stay on the East coast and it was an amazing. It was a, it was a great decision. Wow. North Carolina, you play, in front of your hometown. I mean, this is insanity now. I mean, what is it like leading up to something in your hometown? I mean, North Carolina, it can't get any bigger than this for you. It's real. It's different. It's different now because the exposure that I have now is much bigger than much big. I was fine if it was, I mean, I can, I would do fine if it was one person watching me or a million people watching me. Like, you know, I get that tunnel vision, it's competition, but uh, the, it's a little bit different for me during fight week because there's people that stop me in grocery stores that know me and I don't know they're like I kind of get scared around town because they're like oh hey Justina I don't remember I don't know if they know me from fighting I don't know if they remember me from high school from middle school and like grade school I mean I was a little shithead in grade school so <laughs> I don't know if it was like you know like a former principal like you know like <laughs> I don't so I'm trying to like figure out okay how do they know me I mean there's no telling, but the majority is usually for, for UFC now just because the exposure. And um, I'm saying this a lot. is just really funny. It, kind of, it just caught me a little off guard. Uh, my mom isn't driving around right now just because of her health. So I do mm. her grocery shopping for her. And fight week, um, I do my own grocery shopping and I do her grocery shopping separate uh, just because I'm a little OCD sometimes. So yeah. I for her cart, there's like, Cool Whip and Eggos and strawberries and all these things I don't have or I can't have and I can't tell me how many times people stop me and they're like, uh, should you be eating this stuff? I'm like, <laughs> well, you fight. got me. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it to them. Like I mean, what I'm doing. But one fifteen. Um, so yeah, it's it's weird. I, I kind of get startled because I don't know how they remember me. I don't know if it's a good memory, a me being a little. 
you know, a crazy kid memory or from the UFC. So mm. I have to like ask, like, hold on, how do you know me? And yeah. then we can. <laughs> Your head's got to be spinning. It's got to be spinning, especially being back home and everyone stopping you in the street and stuff like that. Do you get a lot of pictures and stuff? Everyone's running up to you, snapping shots and stuff like that? Or um, Yeah, I get a lot of pictures. Merlin gets way more pictures than I do. He's stealing all my thunder. My dog, Merlin Francis. So yeah. it's totally fine with me. But um, I mean, there's. I mean, I, I think people want to stop me to get a picture for a second, and they're like, oh, no, uh, can I get a picture of your dog? Can we and talk Merlin for a second? Hold on. Now, I went on your Instagram, and I noticed this. I, I looked over there, and right off the bat, I saw a picture of you and your dog. Now, is this when they're doing the, the actual, like, photos for um, – oh, yeah. Yeah, he's sitting right there next to me, and we have to kind of move. He has to be right at my ankle. So we're in the middle of a photo shoot. This is for Fight Week. This is for the promo. So when – <laughs> He's playing with his toy right now. So when you guys see like the the shadow boxing and the TV and like the you see the you know the promo the pr the promotion before the fight. Mm -hmm. Uh, Merlin's sitting right there, and he's just watching me, and he watch he's watching every move. And then they asked me to pick him up and do the Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> That's hysterical. So you must have some good snapshots from that. I mean, that's that is this is the probably one of the most hilarious things I've seen over here. It looks like you're having a good time on on your way to the week. Ah, uh, yes, I'm definitely having a good time. I got to bring my friends with me to fight the week to check in. Um, uh, my coach is gonna relax. Like my coach just got back from Italy, so I had a like I was felt like a little bit of a lost puppy while he was gone, but. Luckily, I had my good friends in different martial arts uh, gyms, and they kindly opened up their studio for me while uh, my coach and my regular teammates were gone, and they worked with me, and they've known me since I was a kid, but um, that's just the kind of support I have here. Like, even though I haven't been to certain gyms in forever, if they know I'm, you know, struggling with something, then they, they do what they can to help me, and I just can't, you know, explain how... How grateful that makes you know how grateful that makes me feel for them you know it's and be awesome. uh, you know there's a lot of gym hopping when that goes around between wrestling and jujitsu and um, with jujitsu and with uh, kickboxing with strength and conditioning with swimming I'm at a whole bunch of different gyms and uh, um, I have it, the support and ever you know the smiles every morning it's it makes training really really pleasant. Yeah, I'm sure. Now, we're live here with Justine Kish. Justine's fighting this weekend, uh, UFC Charlotte, North Carolina, versus a, a G. Uh, Leon Kim. I'm definitely screwing up that name there. G. Young Me Kim. Me too. I think you're saying it way better than I am. <laughs> now, where do you think G. Young Kim got her haircut? I mean, let's be honest. That thing is a little bit ridiculous over there. It looks like, I don't know, <laughs> put a bowl on her it's head. It's definitely a true definition of a bowl, bowl cut, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely interesting. Now, G. Young a formidable opponent over here at six one and two. Uh, they they put you up over here, hometown. What can we look for in this fight? Now, for those of you that don't know, Justine Kish has been on before. She fought Felice Herrig, and that fight was insanity. I don't know if we should go there, but it it did happen. And honestly, I have to th I have to say this: that fight over there, that has to be the explosion of Justine Kish. No pun intended. You definitely bursted onto the scene with that fight. So, in hindsight, looking back at that fight. Do you feel that that was might might have been a blessing in disguise, putting you into the limelight? Because a lot of people know who you are now. Oh man, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, listen, you got to make the best of it. I mean, for Jesus Christ, you you know it is what it is, and you handled it like a champ. You came back, and Felice Herrick, by the way, is no slouch. You look at your record here: six one and zero. Oh. And your only loss is to Felice Herrick, who's fighting uh, Karolina Kovalkiewicz. I mean, Felice Herrick is on top of her game. A anything she's, with she's doing great. I mean, she. I, that, this is the best I've ever seen Felice. You're right. I mm. didn't mean to interrupt. What else were you going to say about her? No, to say, you know, taking a loss to Felice is not necessarily a bad thing. Maybe it's a learning experience right there. What can you take from that loss going into this next fight this weekend? Um, I learned a lot from, I, I, again, I grew up an athlete. I grew up in sports all my life, so I can handle loss. I learned a lot. What's the hardest thing to handle is waiting months and months and months to shake it off. I can't just go compete the next weekend, no matter, you know, no matter how badly I want to with UFC there, you have to wait mm -hmm. and you have to wait your turn and other people want the spotlight and, uh, they have to go through the brackets. So, um, it's months and months of waiting and, um, 
what you can expect from me from this fight is this fight's going to be a lot different because I will be fighting at 125, which is my preferred weight category. Mm -hmm. I actually have a, a little bit over, roughly over, tw uh, this is a rough number, but around 20, 25 fights at 125. And uh, at 115, which is where I fought Felice Herrig, um, actually, at 115, um, I had to cut 17 pounds for that fight. Like, that was... That was really tough. For this for this one, I'm four pounds over right now, and I still have all the way till Friday until I have to make weight. So I feel like um, I'm going to be stronger. I'm going to be faster. Like, in my mind, I was fine in that fight, but I look at myself, and I finally, you know, got the the courage to rewatch that fight, and I just feel like I've – it looks like I've never fought before. And I think people are really going to be surprised, especially with the UFC crowd, like the, like the people that haven't really followed me – before my, uh, I mean, before prior to the UFC, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, obviously people, a few people know now, but I'm really, I feel like I'm really strong. I'm a really good athlete at 125. I felt like it was, um, I felt like, I, I feel like um, the recovery uh, kind of ruined my performance. I don't want to make excuses. Maybe it was just a horrible night for me. It was off. But the hardest thing from that fight was I couldn't just go compete the next weekend and just make sure I wasn't getting worse, that, you know, my skill sets weren't dropping, mm -hmm. that um, it was just an off night for me. Yeah. But it's really hard to hang on a loss for months and months. But um, a lot of people don't know this because I really can't talk about it. I wasn't really sure what I was going to do with myself after the loss. But then a few weeks later, I got a call from my agency and they said, hey, so there's a show. I wouldn't give you awesome at it. Don't say no just yet. Uh, but um, it's like, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's like American Ninja Warrior meets uh, Naked and Afraid meets Power Rangers meets The Last Samurai. I don't know how to explain this, this, this show that I was on. But uh, it was... It took a month to film, and I really, I we're gonna start promoting it in March and spring. So I'm like under you know non disclosure agreement, but mm -hmm. that really got you know I, I have it was a it was a, it was a it was a challenge. It was a reality based challenge, and it was probably the toughest thing I've ever done in my life. Like I winning is like to me winning is no longer like putting my hand up. Like it's survival. Mm -hmm. Like sure. I. I know how to like do the craziest things. So how did you run into this opportunity here now, right after the loss? I mean, you were all over the place. So the, your agent came up to you and said, like, hey, is this a reality show we're talking um, about? I think the show was uh, when I uh, sought out uh, different gyms, because were different gyms and different professionals, because the, the people that got casted, I can't, I can't name names. I can't mm. name the show or anything like that. But Just give us we're one all name. like at the pinnacle of our careers. Like I'm one of the, I'm one, like I'm the UFC athlete. There was a professional. There was a 9/11 firefighter. There oh, wow. was a uh, professional scuba diver. There was like, a, but people of all different kind of, you know, kind of careers, and we're all casted to like accomplish, you know, these certain things that we had to do. And it was real, like, you know, they put us at our, you know, they found ways to. Um, to really, uh, we had, we just had to battle these crazy elements in different in different ways and mm. with different challenges. And um, in in March, I'm gonna go on a promotional. I'll go on tour and we'll start advertising awesome. for it and things like that. But it really got me to see that um, um, I'm 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 really I'm worried about. I'm not worried about, you know, the, the small things anymore. Like the things I was thought would be huge and big. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's really, it really, really not too big in the grand scheme of things. So yeah, I'm going to take a, a bit, I'm going to uh, take, I'm going to remember the loss and remember my mistakes. But as soon as I got back from filming from the show, and it was, it, it was international, it was overseas. Um, as soon as the show was over, I turned my phone, I was able to turn my phone on. And I was like, great, because I, I really didn't really have any plans. I was just hoping I was going to get a fight soon. Mm -hmm. uh, and this this show took a course of a, a little bit over a month. And I turned my phone on. My agent said, um, "Oh, by the way, we got you a fight. One twenty-five is going to be in Boston." I'm like, "Yeah, sign me up." I didn't even ask who I was fighting. I said, "Yes, yes, yes." So they told me, "Hey, well, this it's a girl named Kent." Uh, her name Miss Kim, mm -hmm. and she is from Korea. I'm like, great, wonderful. I'm sure she's a nice person. Let's sign this up. So sign me up for it. So this was um, happening in Boston, you said? 
This is supposed yeah, to happen? Boston. No kidding. A week of la- about a week later, I mm-hmm. hear that uh, I hear that UFC is coming to Charlotte. I get on the phone, call my agent. I'm like, um, by the way, I, I live in Charlotte. You guys know this, right? They're like, yeah, you know, like, um, of course I knew that. I was like, I would really like to get on the Charlotte card. Do you think they'll shift it seven days later? Because it's just a week ahead. Sure, yeah. And sure enough, my, Kim, um, they had to ask Miss Miss Kim. Like they had to ask her, like if she would agree. She she agreed, and a few days later, like they moved my fight over to Charlotte. And thank awesome. goodness because I've been able to stay at home to be with uh, to be with, with mom while I was filming. Mom got really really sick. She had to go to the hospital, and yeah. I had no idea of any of this. Mm-hmm. And so I was able to come back home. She was able to move back in the house because there's, um, you know, there's someone here with her. There's me with her. So it's a, been a different kind of normal trying to do fight camp and making sure that my mom's going to be okay every day, but to be by herself. Mm-hmm. But I mean, how everything works out, how this came out to be in UFC Charlotte, how it came out that I didn't have to leave her. Because awesome. my concern was if I had to leave her, then she might have to leave her own house. And mm-hmm. You know, she's much happier at home. <laughs> I tell you what, and that's great. I'm, I'm so happy that you're able to, to fight at home. It's, it's an awesome thing there. Um, and for the UFC to do something like that, it seems like that, you know, you hear all these crazy stories with the UFC not treating the fighters right. But ever since we've, we've met you, we heard the opposite, that the UFC actually does do the right thing. And what I've noticed on some cards before, I've noticed that they would put cards together and they wouldn't have those hometown fighters there. And then when you would go to the events... That it felt like the air was sucked out of it. I noticed this happened in, De- in Detroit, but in North Carolina, putting hometown people there, in Australia, putting Australian hometown people and New Zealand people there. You know, like it seems like there's a buzz in that crowd, and by throwing you on this card, it's a big deal. So uh, that's it. They must have been like, "Yeah, we got it. We're gonna put you on this card." This is fantastic. Was, I mean, it was very fast. I thought it was gonna be a little bit of arguing, and but it was very, it was, it was quick, and uh, they were. I mean, I don't. Some of us like me over there because mm. um, everything has been a good experience. They've been treating me very, very well. Mm. Um, I, but I'm not really one to complain a whole lot either. So sure. um, I'm grateful for all the opportunities, for every opportunity to compete. But um, one thing that's, that's really, really big for me is I'm not giving up on flyweight. I know the whole mess that happened in my last fight. Oh, so you're not. Um, I still, it's, it's still, uh, it's still a. Um, I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out. Like, it's, mm. it's, it's all strategy, but um, I'm hoping that this will give me an opportunity to be in, uh, this is an opportunity to be in both divisions. Sure. And I hope that means that we will be able to compete more frequently. Well, I, I got a question for you. Uh, at 115, uh, we have um, Jessica Rose Clark who fought uh, Paige Van Zandt. And um, she yeah. said that she noticed that Paige Van Zandt felt undersized in that fight. She felt a lot stronger in that fight. You at 125 right now, do you think you're giving up a lot of size there? Or like you said before, you feel more comfortable at 125, but do you feel that you're giving up, you're going to be fighting bigger girls over there at 125? I, I definitely feel like they are going to be bigger, but mm. I, I, I even saw the, I think it was the, the flyweight house. Okay. And yeah, those girls are a little bit bigger, but I think, I, I think that that will change and that will shift because um, they, I mean, yes, they were bigger, but I feel like I'm more athletic. I'm like, I mean, this is, I don't have to cut weight. And I, I mean, some of these girls are cutting weight from, I mean, I do have to cut, I mean, a few pounds, but nothing like straw weight. Mm. And I mean, I could see that they are a little bit bigger in size, but I'm used to fighting bigger people. Sure. Like I'm used to fight, I'm, and, and straw weight, I'm always hearing how big I am, what a monster I am at straw weight. So I'm very, very comfortable fighting people that are a little bit bigger. I feel like, you know, even though they're a little bit bigger, I'm going to be faster. I'll be, I'll have a uh, quick, I mean, I'm lean, I'm quick and I'm fast. And uh, I feel like not being dehydrated like crazy will also mean like uh, I'm a little bit more mentally focused and mentally there. I'm not trying to talk myself or kind of, you know, uh, trick myself into thinking otherwise. What can we look forward to in this fight against Ji Young Kim, uh, who, like I said before, is a formidable opponent over here. I've noticed there's a lot of decisions and stuff like that. Are we going to get a Justine Kish finish? Is there like a guarantee going into this fight? Do you envision how you're going to uh, complete this fight? Yes, of course. And I don't want to give away too much because I don't want to, uh, you know, if I feel like if I talk, oh, this is how I'm going to do that, I'm going to try to force it, force it, force it. I'm going to do what I've been, uh, I'm going to be practicing 
practicing and doing I, I, I would like to apply what I've been doing every day in training mm. um, I don't want to say oh yes I'm going to get a knockout because next thing you know the pressure is there to get a knockout and when you force things it's just not going to be there mm-hmm. um, that's been my luck so I'm not going to try to because I was trying to get a knockout right away with Felice just trying to finish it away and um, just because I don't want to go you know all the way through but you know that's what happened I was just chasing after this knockout you're just so hungry for it and I noticed that I look back at my other fights and the knockouts that I've had and the finishes that I've had, I wasn't really aggressive about it. I just did my thing in there. And actually, you know, like the knockout and the finish just kind of happened through. It was just part of the flow. It's like so many times I went and did a head kick and then I go, I follow all the way through and I'm looking for, I'm still looking for them and they're on the ground. I'm like, oh, wow, she's gone. (laughs) So... Yeah. You know, it's just like the pressure and everyone saying, oh, it's going to be a knockout. I would hope so. I would love that. And with her style, with her going forward, she's a boxer. Mm-hmm. Um, you will see me try, probably not uh, run into punches as much. I hope not because she's a heavier girl. I'm going to respect her hands much, much more than I do for people that are in the straw weight. Um, she has a crazy right hand. Uh, I'd like to try to keep her feet moving because she does like to uh, plant her feet. And... Um, they said she's a she's also uh, ranked in jiu-jitsu, but it looks like she's had a few losses uh, by by jiu-jitsu. So mm-hmm. I'm not sure how strong or how accurate her ranking is in jiu-jitsu. But um, wherever this fight goes, I'm gonna I, I'm I'm comfortable. And there's no position I'm not comfortable with that I haven't been in before. We are live here with Justine Kish. She's fighting at UFC Fight Night, Charlotte, North Carolina. This is exciting stuff here. Now, okay. <laughs> When you get into this cage, like you've been there before, you've been there, done that, okay, but now you're in front of your home crowd. What can you expect as soon as that cage closes? Do you feel that there's going to be more jitters? There's going to be more excitement? What do you feel is going to be the motions going through your head while you're in that cage? I feel like I'm going to be hearing my family like crazy. Like my sister-in-law, my sister will be there. Like, I mean, it's, I mean, my brother, I don't know if my niece or nephew are going to be, my niece and nephews are going to be going. They probably might be staying home. I'm not sure just yet, but I I have a feeling we'll be hearing them among everyone. And I I don't want to have too much, too many expectations because, Mm. you know, I don't, you know, I don't know if a lot of people will be watching at home, but I think it's going to be a huge crowd. I think it's going to be an amazing fight. Uh, everyone's telling me to, you know, hey, uh, they're telling me, go ahead and um, go, you better win this fight because I'm going to go to it. I'm just thinking, I'm, of course, I'm going <laughs> to, of course, I'm going to do my best to win it, but yeah. you know, uh, so you have a lot of family and hope, friends. I hope, I hope that they can enjoy a good, a good show. I wanted them to see me at my best, my fastest, my strongest, and I think this weight category is gonna is gonna do it is gonna be it um, mm-hmm. until I figure out the best way to manage straw weight. How, how does it work with the UFC? Do they give you guys tickets for like family and friends and stuff like that? Or yes, how does this work? yes, they do. We get like we, I mean, I, I don't know how many tickets the superstars gets, but I, I get. I don't know how many like. I don't know if you're like a if you're top ten, you get more tickets. I don't know. I get four family tickets. Mm-hmm. Four family. And family. I have much more than four family sure. members. But uh, I told them this is what I get. Uh, and if people are like, oh, how do I get? T-? UFC doesn't even give me physical tickets actually mm-hmm. to make sure like my friends and family make it before they go like sold out or something. So what they will do is they'll provide a link for to make to a link that will. Uh, expire in like a certain amount of a, t- a quick time period, a very short time period, and that's their opportunity to get tickets. Bef- uh, like to make sure my my circle gets tickets, mm-hmm. and then they open it up to the public. Now, how does it work? Your family, they're probably all like, "Get me, can I have a ticket? Can I have a ticket?" How, do you put the names in a hat, or how do you? How does it work with these tickets? Well, my mom definitely is not going to take a ticket, oh, okay. uh, and it works out really wonderfully because I have a I have a brother and I have a sister, and I give it to them, and it's free. It they can take they can take their they can take their boy they can. My brother, I mean. I'm assuming my brother is going to take his wife, Inga, and uh, my sister is going to take her girlfriend, Heather. So I think um, it, it worked out very smoothly, and I think it's going to I, – I mean, I love that they're going to go, and I don't think it's any argument. I wish I could give them more. Mm-hmm. But when my niece and nephews get older, I think it's going to get a little bit tougher. So um, be- maybe by then I'll be able to afford tickets for everyone. I'll just buy them myself. But until just- then, uh, you 
might have to do rock, paper, scissors, <laughs> secret Santa. Um, I don't know how it's going to go. Just down bring the dog. The Tell the dog. Over. Right now, the number is perfect. Um, yeah. So And like my neighbors are all going. Like I lived in, a, I grew up in a cul-de-sac and my neighbors are going. So the people to my left, the Grants, the Conrads, it's amazing. Like they're all going to, and I see them every day. So mm. um, they were able to get on that family link, on the family friends link. Mm. But uh, certainly not free. I wish I wish I could uh, be able to help them out that much, as much as they help me, you know? Sure. Yeah, now we're here live here with Justine Kish. She's fighting this weekend. Big fight against Ji Young Kim. Uh, Justine, I have to ask you, Rose versus Joanna 2 happening in Brooklyn over here. Now, I'm sure you saw what happened the first time around yep. with that. I would love to know your opinion on that fight. My mouth hit the floor. I was in shock. But Rose, I mean, she's, she is a complete badass. What do you think about that fight? And uh, what do you think about this rematch coming up? I really wanted to be, I really wanted it to be the one to beat uh, Young Jacek, but mm. uh, I'm very happy that Rose is the person that did it because uh, she's a she's a real, I think she's a great uh, role model in this sport, actually. I think she 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 promotes herself, she promotes uh, the sport really well so far from what I can see, so I'm very happy for her and she does, deserves every moment of it. At the same time, like, it was a knockout. Like, sometimes those happen just because that split second, she didn't see something, you know, it just takes, that's all it takes to win the fight. And it's a, it's a legitimate win for Rose for sure. But I think you, Joanna's going to get after her and just, she really wants to bring that, that, um, she really wants to bring the, the belt back to Poland. So I hope Rose is going to, she's going to have to be at her absolute way better than she was. And at, at, at that time. So I'm hoping Rose, you know, maybe gets another knockout or she, you know, gets the win, but, um, Again, when you win by knockout, um, you, I don't know how easy it's going to be for her. I mean, it's going to be, it's a lot, a lot of pressure for Rose. Sure, yeah. yeah a lot of pressure. I mean, Rose, I couldn't believe it. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I was, believe us. Oh, my God. <laughs> I was in the building. Crazy step. It was that angle step and that left hook. And next thing you know, she didn't see that left hook at all. Unbelievable. She just dropped. Do you feel like uh, uh, someone like Joanna, right? And now you said you, you really wanted to get at Joanna. I mean, when you look at her, striking and everything like that. I mean, she looks like, she almost looked like she was like a mythical creature at one point, the way she fought, she does. you know, and the way Rose beat her in that fight. And if I'm not mistaken, she tapped his strikes on the floor. I mean, I, I was just like, oh my goodness, what is going on right now? I couldn't oh, I didn't see on. that part. I heard that there was some tapping to the floor. I didn't yeah. know. I, I kind of even rewatched it, but I don't know. It was unbelievable. Did, do you think it, did you think it was taps too? I was, I was in the building, so I, all I heard was the crowd going ballistic. And then when I went home, I watched it. Yeah, it looked like she tapped the strikes. I was oh, like, oh my wow. goodness. Yeah, it was, it was un unbelievable. I mean, Rose caught her and did not give her a chance to come back she in that fight. She out stiff. Unbelievable. That girl has yeah, some was, talent. I mean, and, and, and I really i am so happy. Rose is the one, the, like, the person I would want for her. To, you know, she deserved that 100%. Sure. I just hope she's going to, I mean, I would love for her to be able to do it again. But, yeah, my jaw dropped too because I thought that was going to be a rough one for her. What and she proved, you know, because, I mean, she proved, I mean, she proved every, a lot, a lot of people wrong. And she probably... Uh, whoever bet on Rose, they won a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Oh my goodness! Yeah, she's oh, a heavy man. underdog. What What are your thoughts on trash talk in uh, with the UFC? I think for people that uh, talk shit, mm -hmm. um, I think they. I th I mean, I believe in karma. So like yeah. you know, you saw her, you saw Joanna acting up. She was like acting out, but she, yeah, she kind of does. She plays around a lot, but uh, she was really acting out and putting her fist in her face. It's really disrespectful. And I think that comes back at you one way. It, I think it circles right back at you one way or another. Mm. And I mean, it's, you, it's kind of like a parallel to like what happened with Ronda Rousey situation, her acting out like that and boom, like knocked out stiff. Like I just, you know, I look at it as I'm very, very happy that my opponent agreed to competition. I'm not going to be disrespectful. Like, I saw my opponent even in the hallways while, during fight week this. Oh, cut out. Hello? Yeah, we got you. Cut out for a second. Okay, so um, I saw my opponent fight week and uh, uh, just today, and I waved to her. I said, how are you? Did a nice, she did a nice little wave back, and we just, you know, cross path. It was, not, it was easy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I had heard, oh, we're not going to, you know, 
mean mug her or anything. I'm like, yeah. no, she came all the way from Korea. What kind of greeting would that be? Like, <laughs> like I tell you what, it would be badass if like at the weigh-in she just went to her face and said something horrible in Korean to her. Like, <laughs> just like get right up in her face. And just, I don't know, say something. She'd probably think I was just mumbling something. <laughs> so I'm sure I completely botched the Korean language. Uh, we're live here with Justine and Kiss. She's fighting G Young Kim. Uh, yeah, all the way from Korea over there. Um, and I'm pumped up. I can't wait to watch this fight. I am really excited. She's going down from 135. Is that what it is? 135. Wow. So she, not only is she a striker, but she's she's a, a, a she's be, yeah. She's going down from 135. I'm going up to 125. She's going down from because her debut was 135. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, diet wise and stuff like that. Have we changed anything up going into this fight? Going into 125. No, they're not the too much. I of course I had to have a very clean performance diet. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm just. Uh, when I do the water loading and everything, I don't have to do it so early to make weight. Yeah. Um, I got me ass up on the scale at one at one thirty one. Um, that was two days ago. So I mean, it's I woke up at one twenty nine today. So it's you know I have to make one. I mean I have to make one hundred and twenty six pounds. You know, mm. so it's I, it's I mean I, I I was able to do it by just not even starving myself. I was able to eat food every three to four hours. Even fight week, I can still have meals, which is nice because usually I'm just chomping on like celery and ice cubes fight week. So um, what's nice is I'm a, I'm I'm not able to like I don't have to shrink my stomach. I don't have to like do anything drastic, and um. I feel healthy. I feel strong. I feel healthy. I just have to be able to apply every. Like, I just really wanted to address the mistakes I had made from the last one, so it doesn't happen. I don't like the stalling tactic where they just hold you down and let the clock run. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, not, it's not fighting in my eyes. <laughs> how, how is fight week going right now? I mean, I, I was just going through your Instagram and showing the uh, the audience. Uh, it looks like you're having a blast. It, it literally looks like you're going to see the movie. You're going to the movies or something like that. You're getting all dialed up. You're going to walk the red carpet. You're signing the uh, the pictures. It doesn't look like you're about to get into a war. It looks like you're going to a party over here. How do you keep that <laughs> mindset? The hardest the hardest thing to do today. It's great. I mean, I think the atmosphere is really really nice. And, and now that I'm like, you know, this is my fourth UFC fight. I think other UFC uh, fighters are starting to know me and recognize me, and I'm starting to recognize them because I haven't really followed it too much. And they're saying hi, and they're chatting with me, and they're like, "Oh, I saw your fight, Felice." I'm like, I, I don't expect anyone to know me. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, no, no hard feelings whatsoever. I get it. Like, I'm not, you know, you know, I'm not uh, any of the superstar status or anything. But it's just changing already, and I, I didn't expect for people to know anything about me until like maybe like ten fights or something. I don't know, mm -hmm. but. Um, it feels like there's not so much anxiety in the air, but I'm not, I'm not staying in the hotel too much. I'm doing my media work in there, doing the photo shoots, the interviews, and uh, I'm driving right back to the house so mm -hmm. I can be in the comfort with my family, with my, with, my, um, with my friends. So I don't have to hang out and hover in the hotel and aimlessly wander, wander uh, try to figure out what to do to keep myself occupied so I can go back to town and uh, go to my gym, go to my gyms that I usually go to. And uh, I mean, I feel like it's a really, it's, uh, it's a light, it's a light feeling. I feel like I'm light on my feet right now. And uh, this week usually kind of drags because of having to make weight, but it's flying by. Mm -hmm. We're live here with Justine Kish. Now, what I would love to do, I would like to wind it down with this. There's a live chat going on over here. If anyone in the live chat has some questions for UFC superstar Justine Kish, you know what to do. <laughs> Drop it in over here. And Justine, now I'm going to ask you this. Okay, I'm going to warn you here. I can not open up the phone line so we could take some phone calls. But it's Let's only, do it. All right, your game. Okay, so these these. Let's do it. My I'm viewers, game, yes. They're slightly. My viewers are have. They're retarded. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, call in five one six five two two zero two six seven. This is what I want you to call. Give me a question. I'm gonna hang up on you, and then we'll let Justine answer the question. And try to be as nice as possible. The call. Th this is the MMA hole. So what do you expect over here? So I, that's I mean, all right, yeah. it's retarded. I don't Not know. Much at this point. <laughs> so Justine, I'm really happy that you came back on the show, especially during fight week. That's really awesome of you to make some time out for us. Take some time out for us. So I do really appreciate it. No, uh, it's great. I'm glad that I don't have to stress about weight, and I can, ha and I had the time to do this with you. So mm -hmm. I had a great time, even on the last time, on the last show. We had a lot of laughs. So yeah, it was Good awesome having you on. Now. All right, so listen, I, I keep on looking in here. Everyone keeps on going with the, the shitty pants thing, shit, 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 shit. Get it out of your system now in that chat room. They want to know how did your family react when that's in that situation, uh, like when that all unfolded? 
<laughs> I come from a pay, uh, my family. They are caretakers. They, um, you know, my, my, between my sister and my brother and his wife, I also come from a family of doctors. That's nothing. Like they mm. kind of shook it off. And my sister-in-law, she's a emergency room doctor and she sees the horrible, horrible things. And she told me one awful story after another. And, uh, they were fine with it, and and my mom is still in denial about it. She's like, I don't know what anyone's <laughs> talking about. So uh, everyone's cool. My my, I mean, I was a little concerned how what kind of heat my nieces, my niece and nephews would get at school, but they didn't really care either. Mm. Um, I guess you know they could if they overlooked it, and then if they didn't, they fooled me because they don't seem to, you know, care. They could not care any less that had happened. They know that um, my eyes still on the prize. I want to get the belt one day, and they're like, just forget about it. And I mean, that for what they have to see every day and deal with every day, it's really not. And I'm talking about, you know, my family. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really not a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> Well, listen, I mean, I, it came and went, and honestly, no one's even talking about him. It's, it's ridiculous, <laughs> except for these idiots over here. I do notice over here, everyone is like, thank you for coming on. We do appreciate it. Go, Justine. I'm seeing cool. all these cool comments where everyone is pushing for you. And to brave the MMA holes, to come on to this insanity over here, I mean, I, I don't know how you do it. Uh, let's see what else we got over here. Uh, I'm looking through the comments over here. They were like, probably popcorn. Uh, okay. I'm just trying <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. Is that Merlin over there? Yeah. All right. Get in on the lines five one six five two two zero two six seven to speak to Justine Kishan. Merlin is live. Look at that, Merlin. Now this. Now here's the real star of the show over here. I mean, who are we kidding, Merlin? Uh, th- th- does this dog give you your special powers to get into that cage? He's doing the shadow boxing. <laughs> Oh my god. He does. I want him to go I want him to go to Wiggins with me, but I don't know. I'm afraid he has a little bit of anxiety when mm. it comes to crowds and when it comes to loud music. So I don't want people thinking I'm putting him in a horrible situation and being a horrible owner. But um I think he would do really, really well. He loves being right at my side. Um but yeah, he puts me in a great mood all the time. And he um there's this distraction that he that he uh like meaning like uh, all right, hold oh, on one second, Justine. Yeah, we have we actually have a phone call. Whoa, they're all calling in. Hold on. You are live with the MMA Holes and Justine Kish. Uh, what's your name and where are you from? My name is Moses Lorenzo, and I live in San Francisco, California. All right, Moses from San Francisco, California. Uh, what's on your mind, my friend? Uh, my question is, how does Justine prepare for mental combat? Because for me gets in your face at the weigh in and then uh, like Joanna always do the whole mental combat, you know, trying to get in your head like at the weigh in and, you know, doing the whole media thing. I wanna know how did Justine get ready for it or or does she let it bother her or did she like ignore it or you know, how does she get through that whole mental combat? All right, thank you for the call. All right, mental combat, how do you prepare for something like that mentally? That's that's a really, really great question and I've never encountered, I never came across someone to be blatantly disrespectful to me at weigh-ins, ever, ever, ever. Everyone's always been nice, they show me respect, I show them respect again. I always thank my opponents for, for coming because if it wasn't for them showing up, then I wouldn't be getting paid, I wouldn't be getting to compete. So I'm very grateful for them for them taking the fight. And um, whether they, they know that beforehand or afterhand, I make sure to share how I feel about that. But no one's ever uh, came across, but then again, like, um, I think they respect my style and they respect my they respect my history and the things that I've I've accomplished. If they did any history, that is. Um, I was worried that Felice was going to kind of act out because mm. she's known for kind of doing something funny or or getting in someone's face or giving a kiss or something to another girl. And I was just like, you know, of course I have things up my sleeve just in case someone decides to be, a, you know, just to to show off or to try to you know cause like a social media upstir or something because. You know, now that there's uh, everything is live and on social media, like I was like, hmm, I wonder if she really would take that route. Uh, but I'm not. I mean, I'm just gonna maintain my composure. I'm not gonna let anyone. It, ultimately, I have a decision how to feel. I'm not gonna let anyone that I don't know, a complete, you know, a stranger, mm. 
determine uh, determine my feelings you know sure, like yeah. i'm not gonna let them upset me get in my head maybe it might startle me or something for a second but i'm certainly not gonna get upset or angry i'm not gonna have i'm not gonna let anyone have that kind of power over me and the only people who have that kind of power that have that kind of influence are the people that i care about keep the people i love um so it's really not that hard like i'm I, for way i'm some focus i'm want to look in the eyes i want to say you know i I try to look strong. I don't want to, uh, if I'm smiling or laughing, it's usually, uh, I just, I'm, I feel like I kind of look kind of goofy. That's mm -hmm. it. All right, we got another call here. You are live How's with great? the MMA Holes. What's your name and where you're from? Uh, I just want to say that you are the shit. You are the absolute <laughs> shit. And my question to you is why didn't you take an enema like a professional? Uh, it seems like it'd be the right thing to do because what's important for your career is that you keep the streaks for your w they keep the W's basically you keep the streak for your W's instead of your panties alright thank you there, I don't know what's going on there alright All right, so okay. there, there's some Little advice sense, but thank you for your support <laughs> <laughs> that was Jay Smooth he's actually a regular hold on a second uh, you are live with the MMA Holes what's your name and where are you from yes uh, my name is Filthy George all right, Filthy George, what's going on? <laughs> Filthy George, um, how are you? Yeah, I just want to, uh, I just want to ask her what kind of diaper she plans on wearing the next time. All right, time. stop it. All right, stop. Uh, <laughs> I, know. I like what do you call the pull-ups? Those are pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what is wrong with these people? They're out of their minds. <laughs> They're absolutely out of their minds. <laughs> how many radio I do pull-ups? They work great. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable people you know you know it's funny they're not in the spotlight so they don't get to see this but you actually can sit here and take it these people are hiding behind phones calling in and oh my god i had to hang up sorry jay smooth i had to hang up on you <laughs> these people are fucking savage all right here we go we have kenshiro ryu from brooklyn live on the mma holes what's your name and uh I did, what's your question for justine uh uh you know i love the show uh good luck justine on your next fight you know yeah Okay, thank you. Is that all? <laughs> thank you. That's it. All right. uh, I just want to be positive on like all the, the yeah. retards, you know. I appreciate channel, it. You know? Thank you for calling it's in. Just with your voice, and I appreciate that. That's yeah. awesome of you. Thank you for calling. There you go. So he's wishing you good luck over here. And actually, uh, Ken Shiro, a, he's a good guy over there. Oh. All right, here we go. Uh, 716, you're live with the MMA Holes. What's your name and where are you from? Hey, it's a G Man Mule. All right. Right now with Justine. G-Man, you are live with a superstar UFC fighter, Justine Kish. What's on your mind? What's going on, girl? Looking good. What's up? You look ready. <laughs> All right. Is that it, G? So I got a question okay. for you. I mean, you look ready. You said you're mentally there. You're focused. You've been bouncing from gym to gym, getting your work in. But I'm just wondering, like, what your – do you take a lot of supplements? Um, yeah, I mean, I do take supplements. I mean, there's between vitamins, between like a, like I'll do like for a weight cut. Like I'll do, I'll take dandelion mm -hmm. root. You can take like herbal supplements to help you pull water out. I'll cut, I'll cut my salts out. Um, so, of course, protein and uh, um, amino acids. So, oh yeah, absolutely. I just have to be very, very careful. Okay. With All right. Yeah. You know, I mean. I I got a fight coming up too, and I um, I introduced a new one. You know, I have a little stomach issue. It's called Imodium. I was just wondering if you guys have thought about Imodium. All right, G man, thank you for the. I appreciate the call. <laughs> oh, I get it. I yeah, here we go. All right, all right, all right Jesus. Are you alive with the <laughs> MMA there. holes and Justine Kish from the UFC fighting this weekend? What's on your mind? Hey, it's Chris H. Hey, Chris H. What's going on now, Justine? Hey, I have hey. a good feeling about this guy. All right, Chris H. Go ahead. Hey, hey, how, how are you guys? Uh, for Justine, you know, I'm a big fan, uh, student of the game. My question is, you know, like, obviously you've had the pro experience prior to your UFC, the first UFC fight, but what was it like walking out, like, just to your first UFC fight, just like, like some people feel nervous, confident, like, so many mixed emotions, like, if you don't mind explaining that. Okay, good question there. Uh, yeah. Okay, maybe you could walk My us through that. My first UFC fight was at MGM Grand, and it was huge. The weigh-ins were unreal. Um, I, that was when I went against Nina, and I was—I mean, it's been, it was a while before I could compete because of my knee surgery and all that stuff. So I went from the Ultimate Fighter house not being able to do any, not even not being able to compete on that to 
MGM Grand, huge spotlight. Like, it was incredible. And I could not get in the cage soon enough. I was so excited. You can see I'm probably a little bit hyper, jumping around a little bit like crazy. But that's just because I was so happy to be there, so excited. And uh, it just, as soon as I stepped in, I was like, okay, finally, I'm where I belong. You know, I belong here. Now I just have to, you know, stay calm and just, you know, do my thing. Like, just, you know, I know I know I can fight. I know I can fight against the best. I'm comfortable with it, but I still have to prove prove it to others, you know, and I can't, I can't blow it. Um, but it was an incredible feeling, and the fact that it was in that, um, in that kind of stage, uh, it was on New Year's. Like, I remember Williams was on New Year's Day and New Year's Eve. Yeah, New Year's Eve. It was just beautiful. And then I think the fight was on January 2nd. And uh, everything just went went beautiful in that fight. And Nina had a Nina did a one. She was a, a wonderful opponent. But um, finally, it was like a sense of relief. It was like ugh, finally, I like I belong here. I can do what I, I I can I can finally do. I can finally get after what I think um what I think I'm capable of. Mm -hmm. Now, Justine Kish is live with the MMA holes. I am going to take one more call, and then that's it. We'll uh, we'll cut you loose, but you're doing a, <laughs> you're doing a great job here, Justine. Justine's fighting this weekend, UFC Fight Night, North Carolina. Jacare versus Brunson Part Two is going down. I want to get your thoughts on that fight too as we take these calls. And the uh, everyone is all going crazy in this chat. And here's the final call. All right, you are live with the MMA Holes. What's your name, where you're from, and what's your question for Justine Kish? Uh, it's Ken Shiro Ayu again. Oh, he's calling Got back. nervous last time. Yeah, you know? okay. Uh, so, Justine, uh, you usually, before fight, use herbal tea, uh, enemas. It usually helps me use water weight, you know? All right. It's very good for you. Mm-hmm. So sure. I just want to tell you, I'm a big I fan of yours. Like I'm actually the fan that bought your your panties up there. All right, thank you. Okay, so there it is. Uh, okay. <laughs> that was a caller a calling in, making yeah. fun. Oh, super Hold on, we got a donation coming here from Do Tommy Bones, was he said. Justine, what's cracking cookie? All right, so we got Justine, what's cracking cookie from Tommy Bones. Thank you for the wonderful, wonderful donation. All right, Justine, uh, you handled the ridiculousness like a champ uh i do appreciate that i do want to get your thoughts real quick on uh jacare versus derek brunson the main event of the fight uh the card that you got you're on um what are your thoughts on that fight do you have any predictions for us i would like brunson i would like i would like brunson to win i mean he's a you know i think he i mean i just i just i've seen his style i have not seen jacare i have not seen that uh i just uh mispronounce his name uh jacare so um i haven't Jacare is Jacare. Yeah, Jacare Souza. Yeah, that's, that's I good. have not had a chance to watch him fight, so that's why I'm cheering for Brunson. He's a go. I mean, he gets after it. So I'm curious to hear actually what other people are saying and what they think because, um, I mean, this is the. I know that this is the second time they're going after each. They're they're going against each other. But again, I'm, I don't know too too much. I haven't really studied or really. Uh, Pay attention to to that division, but um, I do like Brunson though, so I will be cheering for him just for, out of the, just me being biased, I guess there you, you could say. All right, Brunson for the win. Well, Justine, I mean, you handled all the questions like a champ, a true professional <laughs> over here. Do I I do appreciate that this weekend? North Carolina is going to be rocking uh, UFC Fight Night. Uh, it's going to be insane, and the cool part is it's on Fox. It's on Fox over here. So we have FS1. Prelims, prelims will be Fox Sports. Uh, the first part was Fight Pass. Mm -hmm. Then it'll be on Fox Sports 1. Then uh, the main card is on Fox, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, For FS1 is the prelims. Yeah, Fight Pass is the early prelims and then a Fox card. So you have to think. There's going to be a lot of eyes on this fight. I mean, especially when you have these big Fox fight nights, there's a lot of eyes on these fight nights. So this is a big uh, opportunity for you to get back in that win column, and I can't wait to watch this fight. We do fight reactions over here, so I will make sure we are live rooting you on uh, on the <sighs> MMA holes, and uh, we'll be in your corner for sure. That is so awesome. And thank you guys so much. Mwah. I appreciate it. really nice to hear. Now, Justine, uh, if you would like to plug any sponsors or give thanks to anyone else, now is the time to do that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Of course, I'm going to thank my sponsors here that um, um, here in Charlotte first. So it would be Ortho Carolina, 
Hughes and Associates, uh, a local sponsor that's Gastonia Heating and Plumbing. Then I've got Overwatch Venture Group, my uh, the gear company Fairtex. Um, these guys, uh, all of these guys, have just been really have been very gracious, and the, the way they show their loyalty and their support on me, win or lose, they are still at my side, and I'm very very grateful for it. Of course, for the gyms that I'm at, the Ray Athletic Club, they they have to deal with me every day. And my coaches and my teams, they have, they have the rough end of it. And that's uh, over at Jimmo in Lowell, North Carolina. Um, uh, and also, while my team and my coaches were gone, I want to thank uh, Fit to Fight for having me. And they were uh, very gracious to let me come in and uh, work with their students. I work with some of their... You're going to uh, wrap one on one shoulder. You're going to wrap the other on the other shoulder. And you're going to need a fucking second. army. We have a donation coming in with a question. Thank you very what much. did you eat on fight night when you fucked Felice Herrick? Okay, Jesus. I love you. <laughs> All right, Mark Yuahu, thank you very much. Justine, I apologize. These people are savages over here. Anyway, Justine, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you coming uh, back on the show. And after you get your big win against G. Yun Kim, I can't wait for, to have you back on. Will you come back and explain your victory? Of course, absolutely. So let's we'll set a date now uh, after the fight. Uh, I'll see you guys on the flip side. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Justine, and uh, good luck in your fight. Thanks, Chris. Talk to you guys soon. All right. There she is, Justine Kish, live on the MMA Holes. That's at Justine Kish right over there. It's that simple over there. You can find her on Twitter. If you want to look at her on her Instagram over here, uh, it is Justine Kish. So just check her out over there. She is fucking awesome. Seriously, Justine put up.